Welcome everyone. Today we are headed towards the journey of a small town called Anacortes in the Fidalgo Island, post which we will be visiting the Bindi Island and from Seattle to Anacortes it takes around one and a half hours of time and the distance is near about 80 miles. So here we go. So here you can see Gypsy who is an angel girl. She is super excited for her weekend trip and she patiently waits for all the luggage to get loaded in the car post which she will get inside her crate which is fitted at the luggage space of the car and this is where she will sit, chill, sleep, relax during the travel time. So this is the entire luggage space wherein her crate is fitted where she feels safe during the journey. Anacortes is a charming small town located on Fidalgo Island in Washington state. An easy one and a half hour drive north of Seattle, the town hosts jaw-dropping views of the Cascade Mountains and the San Juan Islands. Its historic downtown with eateries, shops, galleries, museums, a marina and nearby outdoor adventures makes this seaside community an ideal destination for a relaxing and fun Anacortes weekend getaway. The most popular time to visit Anacortes is during the spring and summer months. However, you can visit this small seaside town anytime during the year. What most people don't realize is that Fidalgo Island lies in the banana belt and Anacortes weather is mild year-round. So you can enjoy all the great outdoor things to do in Anacortes even when a lot of the rest of Washington is damp and gloomy. Visitors can enjoy a plethora of outdoor recreational opportunities including whale watching tours, kayak excursions, overnight marine camping opportunities at nearby Skagit Island Marine State Park. The city's historic downtown district is lined with quirky art galleries, antique shops, hip dining destinations serving up international cuisine options, and you can spot a lot of murals all around the town. The most interesting part of downtown Anacortes is definitely the collection of 150 murals that a beloved local artist left as his legacy. With 12 miles of shoreline and 67 miles of public trails, Anacortes is a nature lover's paradise. But the downtown area and its main streets are pretty captivating. Strolling through downtown Anacortes is a delightful experience in any season. It's also full of restaurants, cafes, inviting shops and galleries. But what really stands out are the murals that line many of the building walls and seem to tell a story. This is all the work of the late Bill Michel, an artist and historian. When Bill Michel was a child, he got into a car accident that paralyzed him from the waist down, and he never let it stop him. Instead, he made it his life's work to fill Anacortes with life-sized murals of famous figures within the town. While strolling through the town, we found this place called Bob's Chowder Bar and Barbecue Salmon. So we decided to have our brunch here and it did not disappoint us. The food was outstanding, the service was amazing. This kind soul gave a full bowl of water to Gypsy. And Gypsy being Gypsy, she believes in keeping herself overhydrated. She went ahead and drank the entire water in few seconds. So they had a lot of options of burgers, sandwiches, 
seafood options, cocktails, mocktails, starters, chowders, and we were hungry. So we decided to order a lot of food. So this was the clam chowder, which was amazing. This is the pork belly barbecue. This is the oyster sandwich, which we ordered. One with onion rings and the other with fries. The entire ambient of the restaurant was really beautiful, so we decided to take a couple of pictures there for our memories. Located on the north shore of Fidalgo Island in Washington State's Budget Sound, Anacortes was founded in 1879 by railroad surveyor Amos Bowman and named in honor of his wife Annie Curtis. After having a heartful brunch, and driving through the entire downtown of Anacortes, we headed towards Cape Sante Park. Cap Sante Park is a lushly forested 37-acre park along Anacortes' eastern edge, known for its stunning overlook views of Fidalgo Bay, March Point, and the Cascade Mountains. The park, which is located above the Cap Sante Boat Haven Marina, is a popular family-friendly recreation site throughout the summer months. A short mile long round trip hiking trail traverses grassy stretches and glacial outcroppings as it gains 100 feet in elevation. Passing by a thickly forested area that is home to day use picnic sites. At the trail's end, visitors can enjoy unparalleled views of nearby Mount Airy and Mount Baker. And as we headed towards our next destination, to our surprise, we spotted a deer crossing the road of the park. It was a sight to behold forever.
next we headed towards Washington Park in Anacondas. And I definitely recommend that this is a must do when you are visiting Anacondas. The 220 acres of Washington Park look and feel similar to a state park, but it's actually a city park. For a small town of around 15,000 people, Anacortes has an impressive collection of parks, with Washington being the crowning gem. Because it's a city park, no special passes are needed and there are no fees unless you need to park a boat trailer or are camping overnight. There are three main sections of the park, which are Sunset Beach, Loop Road, and the campground. We decided to hike Loop Road, which is the main attraction of Washington Park. It is a 2.2 mile paved loop round the headland. The one way road is narrow with a speed limit of 10 miles per hour. Once you start on the loop, you have to follow it the entire 2.2 miles until you are back at Sunset Beach. If there is one place we would go above all others, when we need to relax, it's the forest. Walking between old trees is almost meditative and something that we all should try to do whenever we get a chance. It's pretty much the antidote to stress and we always come out happier than we went in. It seems lots of people feel the same because we feel that nature has its own way of healing. Loop Road has multiple viewpoints, most of them minor with just a small place to pull a single vehicle off the road and sometimes a bench. There are three major viewpoints that everyone should plan to take the time to stop at even if you skip all the minor views. The three major viewpoints along the Loop Road Trail are the West Beach, Green Point and the Burroughs Channel Viewpoint which is located about 75% of the way through the loop. The viewpoint at Burroughs Channel Bay Lookout is quite stunning. The paved pullout has room for about 6 or 7 vehicles and on busy days additional cars park along the road nearby wherever they can. The viewpoint is an open area of exposed rock at the top of a high bluff. From here, you can see Burroughs Bay, Burroughs Island, Burroughs Passage, Skyline Marina and Mount Airy. The water of the passage is a beautiful green. It's so green that it seems like a painted picture in front of your eyes. Whichever direction your eyes goes, you can see only spectacular and breathtaking views of the green water. The beauty around was so captivating that you will wish to stay there for as long as you want. We stayed there for some time soaking in all the beauty and taking a few pictures for our memory book. Gypsy had a wonderful time there running across the rocks and having a gala time. We headed back on the trail to reach the West Beach. The entire walking along the trail is an experience in itself. 
the greenery around, the beauty, the rainforest feeling and the birds chirping just makes you feel relaxed, serene and just fills your heart with gratitude. shared between pedestrians, bicycles and motorized vehicles. Because of the viewpoints along the way and ease of travel on the paved road, many walkers prefer using the loop rather than the forest trails. Some use a combination of both. The road opens at 6 am but only for pedestrians and bikes. Motor traffic is not allowed on the road until 10 am. The road closes to everyone at dusk. If you are planning to take your car, then I would recommend allowing a minimum of half an hour for driving the loop. You will be in no hurry and you will stop at all the major viewpoints and the other points where you will want to take pictures. You will end up spending about an half an hour on the loop from the time you will leave Sunset Beach until the time you return. If you want to patiently wait on the possibility of seeing wildlife, spend more time on photography and have a picnic or hike a trail, you could easily be out on the loop for more than two hours, appreciating the nature, the rainforest feeling and soaking in all the beauty around. After 10 am when the loop opens to vehicles, everyone needs to be careful and alert. The road is narrow. It is the responsibility of drivers to have patience and make sure there's enough room for walkers to get out of the way. And it's the responsibility of walkers to listen for vehicles and get off the road so they can pass you. For those curious about the terrain to help with deciding if they should walk or drive the loop, much of the road is on gradual grades. But there are some places where the road is steeper as it climbs up and down small hills. Most people experienced with doing hikes of this distance that are rated as easy shouldn't have difficulties. The next stop is the West Beach. You can just enjoy the view from the top here like we did. There's a bench if you want to sit for a while. But for those not hampered by mobility issues, stairs lead down to the water below. While the stairs go down a steep bank, the bluff is not very high here so it's not a massive climb when coming back up. rocks you can walk out on and a good sized gravel and sand beach in a shallowly curving cove. West Beach is the westernmost beach within the Washington Park. It's tiny but oh so beautiful. The rocky and pebbly beach provides spectacular views starting from the stairs leading down to the beach and then at the beach itself. 
West Beach has tide pools to explore, many birds to watch, and a small beach to lay out a towel or go for a swimming during the summer months. Bring your binoculars. The beach can be a little tricky to access. It's a slow 10 mile per hour one way drive through a small campground, and there's a decent chance the two parking spaces will be taken, especially during busy summer months. If you are up for the walk, it's better to park at Washington Park's day use parking area and walk from there. Gypsy went crazy with happiness. She ran across the beach from one end to the other, exploring the waters, chasing the seagulls, and feeding herself with some seaweed. As the history goes, it is said that this rocky beach used to be deep underneath the crust of the earth and is one of the few places in the world you can stand on what was once the Earth's mantle. While the Earth's mantle is only 30 miles, which is 45 kilometers below your feet, most everywhere else on Earth, it is over a thousand degrees and you would be smashed beyond any recognition if you tried to go there. However, here on this beautiful beach is an obscure corner of Washington State. The plate tectonics has brought the mantle to you. The rock is a type of metamorphic rock called serpentinite. According to Northwest Geology, this rock originally came from the upper portion of the Earth's mantle below the oceanic crust. And you can notice the strangely reddish-orange rocks at this beach. The views were mesmerizing and spectacular. We spent a lot of time basking in the sun and taking a lot of pictures together for our memory book. Gypsy had no end to her happiness and she enjoyed exploring every nook and corner of the beach there. I would recommend to wear proper shoes to explore this best beach as it is a pebble beach and it can get quite tricky if you are not wearing the proper shoes. From the West Beach, after a very short walk, you will reach the Green Point. It is a large open lawn with a western view. The lawn is bounded by rocks along the shoreline and there are places where you can scramble out on the rocks if you are spry. The point has several picnic tables and benches. The views are mesmerizing, spectacular, and jaw-dropping. Greenpoint is a great place to go for sunsets, wildlife viewing, and boat watching. Wildlife possibilities include seals, bald eagles, harbor porpoises, sea otters, and whales. But it's pure luck whether you will actually see anything interesting. The day we were there, the most exotic thing that we saw was a large group of cormorants flying by. And the final point in the park is the Sunset Beach. It is a waterfront area of Washington Park and is like what you expect to see at a typical beach park. Sunset Beach has a little something for everyone. Tall trees for shade, renovated playground, view benches, an open area for tossing a ball or frisbee, free picnic shelters, lots of uncovered picnic tables, beach side tables with fire beds, gravelled salt water beach with a north facing view of the island and Rosario's freight, boat launch and rocks for clambering around off. After spending a beautiful day 
at Anacortes in Fidalgo Island. We took along with us a lifetime of memories. We headed towards our next destination which was Whitby Island and anybody who was planning the trip to Whitby Island exploring Fidalgo Island is a must. And finally, we had to cross the Great Deception Pass Bridge to reach to our stay, which was an Airbnb in Oak Harbour. Constructed during the Great Depression, Deception Pass Bridge has become an iconic structure listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The bridge connects North Whitby to Fidalgo Island and the mainland beyond. Two graceful curves in the bridge stand approximately 180 feet above the turbulent waters of this narrow passage of Pajit Sound. The smaller span is named Cano Pass Bridge, but they are often referred to collectively as Deception Pass Bridge. So finally, we are in Whitby Island and we headed towards our stay, which was a farm stay in Oak Harbour. Since a long time, we wanted to have an experience of a farm stay, enjoying the peacefulness of nature in the farm and enjoying the country life. While we love visiting new cities, there's something to be said for seeking out quiet spaces on vacation. And if you are looking to leave the noise and hectic pace of your everyday life behind, you can't do much better than a farm stay. One of the main reasons to book this farm stay was for Gypsy to play around the farm and experience the countryside. So finally, we reached our Airbnb stay called the Bit and Brittle Cabin, which is hosted by Donna in Oak Harbor, Washington. Donna and her husband have been enjoying life on the Whitby Island since 2001. Donna has a deep love for horses and horses have been a part of her entire life. And her husband Stan has a deep love for cars and you can very well understand that by the number of vintage cars that are parked in the farm. So this was our stay, which was very warm and inviting. I loved how it was decorated and appreciated the small fountain of the items and the personal touch that Donna had given to the entire interior designing of the space. It was an absolutely perfect place neat and clean, the kitchenette had everything that you needed, the bed was comfy and the TV choices were endless. Donna's place was well thought out and had everything that we needed for the one night we stayed. Fresh eggs Ruffles, lace, dry roasted and salted almonds, hai, peanuts, hai, fir extra roasted crunchy peanuts hai salted, fir sara coffee ka different coffee ka sara hai, toasted cinnamon flavored or different different flavors ka, plus in log brown sugar, cinnamon, stevie cut, achha in log oats oats bhi bhi hai. Penne and four cheese and he's made with organic pasta. dinner bhi khane ka man hai, coffee, 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 coffee,
सही यहाँ पे माइक्रोवेव आवन मतलब अगर तुम रह रहे हो If you like watching this video please like share comment and subscribe to my channel so that I can bring to you more such beautiful videos